All right, welcome to what episode are we on? Episode three. Episode three of the Wheel of Pod. Episode five of the show. That's right. Episode three of Wheel of Pod. So we are very excited to have the designer of our graphics and fellow nerd on the podcast, Carlos Moreno. Carlos, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, which highway did you take to get here? Uh, 75 to 244. Okay. Okay. I also took 244. We are sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. For uh, for any any Venn diagram pod for good slash real pod <laughs> listeners, you know how I feel about two forty four. Okay, I am representing Greenwood, so I'm. I'm also I'm wearing the, my victory for Greenwood shirt. Oh, nice. So right. we so are good. Yeah. I'm just gonna make sure that the other audio thing, my audio back is recording. There we go. Okay. Viewers, don't worry about that. Okay. So, episode five. Uh, oh. And- you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't do that last time. I'm Jesse Orch. And I'm Andy Cagle. And we're here at Inner Circle Vodka Bar because we're going to uh, drink and talk about a little time in a tavern of sorts. Yes. Because if you've read Wheel of Time, you know there's a lot of taverns. There's a lot of taverns. And inns. And inns that are and, also taverns. And tavern keepers. Yeah. And uh, you know what this needs? We need a library in here. That's true. Because <laughs> all those inns also have libraries somehow. We need a anyway. library. I'll work on it. All right. All right. And go upstairs. I know there's some empty offices upstairs. So. Anyway, okay, so episode five, something, something blood. Uh, you know, listen. <laughs> There's you, certainly a lot of blood. When, when you stream shows, you don't necessarily always see what the title of the episode is. But I know it had, it had blood in it, so. So, this is actually, it didn't really come up in this episode like I thought it would. Um, but it's actually uh, part of a prophecy, which I don't want to go into too much. Uh, spoilers for everything else. But it's a, it's a prophecy um, in the book. Um, but not from uh, the good guys, like you, we've seen the prophecy so far, that the dark side also has prophecies. Mm. The dark side prophecy. Interesting. The dark side prophecy. Here's the thing, like if both good sides and bad sides have prophecies, like one of them's gonna be wrong. So uh, you think that would uh, play itself out pretty quickly. It is, and I think that you see this coming to fruition a little bit more in the books, and I'm sure we're gonna get into it in later seasons when it becomes more relevant with some of the characters who predict things or see things and near the end they're like oh well it has to be this way you you saw it you like had this prophecy and the answer is basically when the world's torn apart and the dark one wins all prophecies end everything ends including prophecies everything else so prophecies are only good so long as they can prophesize that makes sense well that does make sense i mean so when you're like oh yeah it has to be this way or it seems like it's going to be this way one you have to believe the actual words of the prophecy which if you read any fantasy you should never ever do because we yeah. can't just take them at face value. That's nope. clearly wrong. And uh, and secondly, up to a certain point, and then once, you know, the world's being unmade, part of that world is the prophecies that hold it. Well, that's a very interesting tangent. Yeah, um, interesting. So question now is, let's summarize the episode. That wasn't a question so much as a, so a let, movement. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, so how would you summarize this episode? So I like to break it down in the different paths that they've been taking, kind of what we did last time. And so, if y'all don't mind, break it down with the different characters who are all separate still at this point. All right, go um, for it. Because the episode opens up with they're all going to, uh, I pronounce it Tarvalon because I've read it and listened to the audiobooks, but now the show pronounces it Tarvalon. So I'm going to try to really stick to that. Hey, the, the first time the show pronounces the way the thing the way I hear it in my head when I read it. So, so yay. So they're all on their way to Tarvalon. Hold on. Um, uh, air horn noise. There we go. And... And they've been separated. The You have Egwene and Perrin with the Tinkers, the traveling people. You have Rain and Matt, who uh, are now on their own. Um, they were with um, Tom Marilyn. And then you have uh, Nynaeve, who's caught up with Lan and Moraine, and the other Aes Sedai. So that's kind of where we're starting. So let's break it down. So one of the things I think they did well is uh, the show did well with, uh, with Egwene and Perrin. So the summary is they got captured by the White Cloaks that mm-hmm. were hanging around. Yep. Um, he recognized them hanging out with someone who he thinks is an Aes Sedai, and they're clearly evil. And, uh, yeah, so well, and, I started it. Why don't you sure. popcorn to you? Yeah, so, you know, and, of course, they are, one, they added they added um, Egwene channeling in sort of the epic uh, escape scene, which I kind of liked. I liked her little fireball that didn't do anything. That was nice, that was a nice touch. Uh, Perrin's eyes, we got Perrin's eyes going yellow. And then we got, uh, you know, the wolf, 
the wolf assisted escape. So we did. But let's, again, let's yeah. not forget that. So so this is something, and and I only read the first book. Okay, and it was way back in the nineties. So and and I'm from the Bay Area. So you're basically coming from a fresh point of view. Pre- pretty much. Uh, there was a lot to distract a 20 year old in the 90s in the Bay Area in California, and it wasn't sword and sorcery books. Okay. So, uh, so I wasn't reading a whole lot uh, during the time that, that these books were coming out, uh, but I did have a lot of friends who read and appreciated Wheel of Time, and so I, I know more about Wheel of Time from my friends uh, uh, than, than from the book than from actually reading the book itself. I read the first book. I think I may have started the second book, but like got distracted and put it down. Um, so I so I vaguely know what's going on, but not really. Um, and and for so you're talking about Perrin, and like since the first episode, I've been I've been waiting for Perrin to like have this sort of talk therapy session about killing his wife. Yeah. And I was like, oh good, he's gonna, but not like that. Oh, not yeah. while he's yeah. being. Carved up. Yeah, listen, hashtag um, uh, justice for Perrin's wife again. Mm-hmm. Justice yeah, for Perrin's yeah. wife. So yeah. uh, that was really tough to watch on many, many levels. Yeah. Um, so what did you, because here's what I think they did well in this episode. Uh, it, it was brutal to watch, the white cloaks. Yeah. What did you, how do you feel the white cloaks come across? What they, are your opinions on the show and also just them as a people and and, and connections you can make. So the show is doing, I think, the smart thing, which is like removing sort of all nuance from the White Cloaks and being like, they are not a force for good in this world. So so later on when things happen to them, you're not all like, you know, like confused by it or like not knowing where they're going to be. They are the, they are the non, non-attached to the Dark Ones, bad guys in the story. That like, you they assume think, they're not attached to the Dark Ones. True, one. true. Like, but most White Cloaks think they're doing good, right? As most villains do. Right. And... The show's just like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip over any of the sort of nuance of why the white cloaks exist, their history. They do not like Ace to die. The guy explains it very clearly why. Yeah. And I'm not I don't disagree with them 100 percent on that either. Well, no, yeah, they, they manipulate, they will yeah. power that other people can't get. Um, they're given advantages. And when you have someone who has a lot of power, whether it's in this fantasy world, magical power or money or you know different things but this one is just like almost unnatural so i can see where like people fear it um clearly the white cloaks are religious fanatics is the connection we make to a real world yeah um what i really liked about this episode and i, I want to kind of get your opinion on it is this is why i liked it because in the books you have like a lot of like backstory on the white cloaks and they're like trying to be like the source of good and, and they think they're the light in the world um and that the Aes Sedai and uh, anything having to do with the power is bad, and that their thing is not corruption. It's trying. They think the corruption is the Aes Sedai, the magic users are trying to get out. And there's a lot to that, a backstory, and it's really hard to get that across in a show, especially something like this, where they have a lot to come across very sh- shortly. So with the torture, this is what I liked about it: the cleaning of Egwene was weird at first, but then what I liked about it is if you had any other show, if this was you know, um, Game of Thrones or anything else, like the washing of a, you know, 19-year-old girl would be sexual, uh, would be kind of provocative. It was not. It was brutal. They did not get pleasure from it. They weren't leering at her. They were treating her less than human. And she even, like, covered herself up in the one shot that could have, like, exposed, uh, you know. Yeah. Like, like, well, because I was thinking they were trying to make it sexy. No, like, listen, HBO would have 100% shown those boobs. No, so. but, but I think, no, I think it's a choice. I think you might see boobs later on, but this one, it wasn't about yeah. the sexuality. It was about her treating, they were trying to clean her. They were, yeah. like, they were trying to ritually, uh, clean her uh, ritualistically yeah. right. because they're fanatics. Yeah. And they were showing that, like, they were not leering at her. And as soon as she covered up, they're like, good, you're covered up. <laughs> It, like yeah. they were, they did that, and then even when it came to the torture, um, he was eating. This was not personal. This was callous, but it was not cruel. He cleaned his knife. He cleaned his knife. This is not. Oh, these are the bad guys because they're cruel. They're malicious. They're rapers. They're anything like that. No, they're not. There are people who think they are in the right in a full way, and so they were able to get that across instead of through lots and lots of pages, which is in the book. 
Yeah. They Listen, were able to show. We, we can hey, say that about any topic. Well, any topic. Pages but, and pages in the book about but, well, it. Well, but I felt like they did a good job of condensing that into yeah. just a few scenes where I think instead of being like, oh, this is scary, or hey, this guy's like a cruel sadist and everything else. No, this guy's just callous. He thinks he's in the right, which is sometimes scarier, and it made it frightening. He was not doing that because yeah. he wanted to torture them. He was not trying to play a trick on them because he's trying to mix them up. He just knows that there's evil, and he's trying to hunt that out. He also got his his nice like it's hot outside look of, of his of his garb, which I thought was nice. So you're, you're the book expert. There's a white cloak character that we meet early on in the story, who we go back to over and over again. Is that him? Yes. Okay. So. Um, it's him and his son. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see this character, um, uh, uh, Valda, and the actor killing it. Oh yeah. Killing it. So good. That's such a good job. Um, so what did you think? So that was my impression of the White Cloaks. So I'm like, man, yeah. I love that they were able to get so much story and get across like these characters so well yeah. in such a short time. So what did you, what did you think? Yeah, I, I appreciate what you said about power. And, and you know, like if you, if, if you start comparing like, you know, I did read all of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And so all the Tolkien stuff and, you know, one could argue that most sword and sorcery is, is sort of a derivative of Tolkien. They're, they're either a response or a copy right, right. of. And, and so... Especially in the 90, 80s and 90s when all this was coming out, you almost had to be in order to get accepted by publishers. You almost had to, like, yeah. at least start out that way yeah. in order to get published. And, and it didn't. So there's definitely some derivatives, especially this first book. What I appreciate about uh, sort of Robert Jordan's approach, and, 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 and again... I, Coming at this not really knowing much, I don't know like if this is correct or not, but it seems to me like like Lord of the Rings is, is all about like this. There's this ultimate power in the world, and we have to destroy it because it's too powerful. Nobody should wield it. We need to throw this ring into the lava yeah. and just get rid of it, right? So that so that the world can be healed, right? And and we, we did we do get a ring lava scene later on, but we can talk about that. Yes, um, that's interesting. But that's a different part. Right, safe, safe, safe. Oh yeah, actually, no, I do remember that. I do remember <laughs> that from the episode. Yeah, uh, but but this story seems to be there's an ultimate power in the world. It destroyed the world once. How can we use it to possibly do good? You know, yeah, it's something like, like we, oh, this is a power we, that can we literally... throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, yep. let's not do that. Let's right. see how we can might be able to wield this power to actually do some good in the world. And so when you see the white cloaks. Clearly, their types are not great, but you can almost empathize with them, like you were saying, where you're like, yeah, if this was any other fantasy, the power that literally, you know, broke the world um, and had to, people had to start from scratch. Yeah. Uh, power generally is not looked upon as a good thing. Right. Power always right. is yeah. a corrupting force. Right. Right. And, and even in it, this story, it also is, but there are people who realize, like, power itself has no agenda. It's how people... Power wheels. It's how it's it. yeah, yeah, it's how it's wielded. Yeah, I guess so. that's what so I was you're trying saying to get at. Weavings don't kill people. People kill people. Yes, I do. I do say. So if we take away all the weavings, anyway. <laughs> um, so okay. So all right. So okay, right, and then yes. So they're now under great pressure. They're like, like, hey, one of you has to sacrifice themselves. Yep, yep. They talk about it. He has his um, uh, lay on the couch. <laughs> finally right. released the yes. fact that he killed his wife. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then get, here's the very basic uh, answer that should have occurred to him now. Like, it was in battle. Like, it happens. It's not your fault. Sure. He, I mean, uh, he's still going to feel that way. Like, of he's definitely he's struggling that. internally. Of course, of course. And then now that we know he has some kind of connection with the wolves and where that normally would scare him, I think that they both were, instead of, like, giving in and being like, no, that's fine. You die. I'll do it. Like, they, you know, 13 worlds are stubborn. And they both were like, no, I'm going to be the one to sacrifice. And they did in two different ways. So Egwene used her power. And she, you know, it's very new to it. We've kind of seen that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that it looks like she has some power, which is yeah. our first thing that, yeah. oh, like, she's not naive at this point, but she has some power. And and she tried really hard. And she achieved more. She had the distraction. but And I like the fact that instead of, like, the weaving damage or freeing herself, she freed Pym. Yeah, yeah. That, that shows the bond between them, I think. Um, and also her desire to save Pym and not herself. And then Perrin's power. Yeah. The show's going to have to explain how he, like, cell phone called the wolves via his mind. Because that's what he did. He, he you know, the, the wolves in every book, If when wolves are talking to people in their heads, like, they they communicate via images and, like, um, like core emotions. 
And so I assume the show's gonna have to explain what Perrin did there. Like we know as book readers what he did. And but, I think it'll come out, but I think this first thing was like, oh, he called the wolves. Yeah. Again, and you can tell where because is Elias. The clue, anyway. the clue is that yeah. um, when he got out, instead of being scared of the wolves, he knew they were coming. He knew they yeah. were there. Yeah. Uh, they, they couldn't flash back to like that one wolf licking his leg, and then he right, sees that wolf. I did remember that. I yeah. was like, you do get kind of a premonition. Yeah. You, like, you do. Yeah. Um, something about him and the wolves, and 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 they're not they're not going to be attacking him. Yeah. And they're, and they're it gonna was be... it was Chekhov's uh, leg lick. So, so <laughs> I kind of talked about this last time, but I felt like they last episode they set up Nynaeve as a possibility for yeah. the Dragon Reborn. Mm-hmm. Um, they set up. Uh, Matt as a possibility yeah, for Dragon yeah, Reborn. Right. They didn't weren't as obvious with it, but now you're like, okay, you have Aaron with the wolves and a Gwen who is also powerful, but not to the point where like I said die or shock. I mean there's not any there. Yeah. Um like, at least alive. And ones. then and then they and then they free themselves. Yeah. Um they haven't met up with anyone, so that's kind of their storyline. Again, hashtag justice for Bella, where is Bella? Anyway. Hashtag yeah. Um, Bella, Bella plays hashtag, a very important... hashtag where is Bella? Yeah. Hashtag uh, justice for, for parents, parents' wife. wife yeah. Uh, anyway, so again, another important scene that Bella is in in the books and not in the show, but that's fine. Um, so okay, so we move, we go from their escape to, do we go to uh, Nynaeve land? Well, these all Moran, mix or, up. Yeah. So, so like we're just saying one at a time instead yeah. of going back and forth. Um, uh, I would like to combine the two other groups arriving to Tarvalon at the same time as a discussion point because. I loved it. Never, I never in my head like I knew Dragon Mount was near Tarvalon. Like obviously, yeah. The way they showed it to you and Rand's it like incredible. Rand's sort of inherent knowledge of knowing a thing he's never seen before was just. I was like, I was like, I, I know what I know. I knew one hundred percent what that was. It mm-hmm. looked great. I don't know what happened between episode one, episode five, but the CGI has gone way better. So. CGI is great. Um, I uh, liked uh, their interpretation of Tarvalon. Yeah, yeah. I think it looked incredible. It's very not only it's the very, CGI like, minis- you yeah, see. Yeah, it's like it's very Minas Tirithy, which I like. The buildings, so. they said they created, and um, so let's talk about Tarvalon. Uh, you read the book a really long time ago. You've read it more recently. Yeah. I've read it a lot. Um, Tarvalon is it's, a what? metaphor with the, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? With the geography of the city and everything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I have a vague memory of this now. All right, so. Or pretend uh, I don't know. Very much this, the Tarvalon is, is uh, controlled by the Aes Sedai, and it's very plain in the books with maps and the description of the city where it's surrounded by rivers, but it, um, what, what rating do we have on this podcast? Oh, it's, it's explicit. You can curse. All right. So it's a vagina. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tarvalon. Yeah. Yeah, you look at the map of it. It's a vagina. It's a vagina. It's 100%. It's created. And I it, felt they, without making it vulgar, they alluded to that. So we're like, if you knew, you're looking like, oh, the vagina city. And then you saw the city. Take like, me yes. down to vagina city. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was going to go on with that. But you know what? I don't think that would be good. Yeah. Um, but so... Uh, you know, there's a lot of metaphors and different things with connections to the world now, yeah. with different things, but like that was almost an explicit like this is the power of the vagina. Yeah. Well, I really wish I had we had a you know, one of our hosts being a woman here instead of me just talking about this. Listen, uh, again, we'll talk about it next week. Uh, one, one a future Rant Nine podcast I, I believe we've talked about is us talking about uh, female sci fi, but only men on the podcast. But only men on the yeah. podcast. Um, it's so bad. It's I, gonna be so bad. Here's the thing, like, Darvalon, the city itself, is mentioned but not present in uh, Book One. Right? That's correct. And so they're using Tarvalon to replace Camelon in the book and in, in, in some ways. In some ways, in, in some ways out. They're skipping over Camelon to, uh, one, bring Lowell into the story. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, and Ogre. And Ogre. Not, and not Ogre. And then, not Ogre. Like, Ogre. Again, he, yeah, um, see, is that, like... Was Robert Jordan trying to just avoid copyright infringement with Trollocs and Ogiers instead of Trolls and Ogres? I think he was just, or like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, what, what, is, what is that about? So, yeah, he wanted something similar, but like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's different, but it's also, <clears throat> they're also different. Yeah, at least they're not like dragoons. I, 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 yeah. Okay, they're similar, all so right, I, fair so enough. Robert Jordan, and, and because I've read this a lot and read interviews, and, and he takes, he's like, hey, you know, I took a lot of, the world, because this is kind of like the world that's been blended, it's a, you know, future. So he kind of took um, concepts and folklore yeah. and gods and powers and stories from all cultures and yeah. really wrapped them yeah. into this one. Because 
the idea is that this is a wheel of time that a lot of these things keep like going born again so sure. like you'll have characters in this series and i think it'll come out in the tv show too where this is like odin you know, or this is like a Greek god, or this reminds me mm. of a story of like an Asian culture. And sure. these are like woven in and they are specifically taken from them, including the concept of, and this is how I would explain it, and I could be wrong, where it's like, no, you gotta be like Lord of the Rings, because that was the only like best selling an example of how to sell books and fantasy. Right. But also it's like, oh yeah, they're similar to ogres because that's yeah. kind of that concept, but it's reworked into yeah. this because the wheels turn. And this is the like next evolution because it's a new wheel turning. So you have um, ogres and trolls that have now become trollocks, which are very apt and look very different. And then ogres, which are clearly very, very different. Mm -hmm. But and, I like that yeah. they did that throwback because well, it is similar to people who are, haven't read the book. I right. Like, yeah, I like it one because ogres are usually not like pleasant creatures to run into. And also, like, again, like, I'm a huge Tolkien fan, but even Tolkien, like, wasn't clear on the difference between like a goblin and an orc. Like <laughs> at first, he, they were, he used right. them interchangeably, and then eventually, it's like no, 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 what? so like you know, I, I'm fine with Robert Jordan calling them ogres, or you know, in like uh, Game of Thrones, naming a character Kavon instead of Kevin. Like you know, you gotta mix it up. So <laughs> you have to. You, 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 each so, so, sometimes, fair sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But you go with it. All right. So, so we're kind of talking about this. So let's go ahead and um, give these quick synopsis real quick for everyone following along at home. Uh, you've kind of done it while we have you talk about the uh, Matt and Rand storyline this this episode. Yeah, this episode. So so they arrive in uh, Tarvalon. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, I'm assuming, um, is under this uh, cursed dagger sickness. Yep, which keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, uh, you see him kind of uh, growl at. Uh, uh, Nynaeve. Yeah, Nynaeve when she tries yeah. to or, or, help or, him. Or that kid, that, that little kid, who normally he's very kid-friendly, and he sort of screams at that kid when they're on right. their way. So, yeah, because he's not, he's he's, not great. He's, he's not changing, great. he's changing, yeah. he's sick, he's pale, he's sweaty. He's very pale. Something's very wrong with Matt. Yeah. Uh, Rand is still trying to convince him that they're they're doing the right thing and they're on the right path and they're, they're, they're checking all the boxes and doing yeah. all the right things that they're supposed to do. Rand seems very uh, sort of uh, get, let's follow the rules kind of guy. Yeah. Um, I, I don't get a lot of character depth, or maybe I'm missing something. No, not yet. No, no. Yeah, I'm just I'm Rand's not getting kind a whole of a, lot from Rand. Yeah. He's he he's a. They have not delved into him at all. No, well, again, the, the books don't either for a while, so he's kind of a, okay. Well, that makes sense. Well, I guess. here's the thing: they literally have to give him the magic power to attract people to him; otherwise, no one would follow him. So, I mean, he's yeah. a basic white guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a little bland. Fair, yeah. you yeah. know, he's a, yeah. uh, he's well, a he's a tall white cis yeah. gendered man, which you know, yeah, he's a important part of the story, but uh, also a little boring. Yeah, I do wish that uh, they would have given some better lines to the Ogier. Uh, oh, I for, loved his lines. Really? Well, they, they, they were very for book being like I guess like thousands of years old or however you know like an old wise creature. Yeah, well, like he, he speaks he's very like, sort of like yeah, he's basically. That, he's, he's old for uh, he's young for, for people. He, he's young for yeah. He's old for a person, but young for an ogre. I think yeah. he's like eighty for his in the culture. Books. I think he's in the nineties or nineties. Yeah, yeah. For his culture, he's still very young. Was almost not allowed to leave. That's more book stuff. Gotcha. Um, but this one, he seems very old to anyone else. And they also speak a lot slower. I was hoping he speak, spoke a little bit slower. But yeah, my favorite Amazon is, doesn't have time for that. So okay. they um, also like he does not rush. And so my the reason right, I liked right, him right. is he kind of did it and like I did get at one point impression. ran like rushed off. He's like I'm taking he's my like, time. He's like humans, yeah. so and dumb. He has his thoughts and he just like speaks it out. And I love at one point they're just moving a mile a minute because all these emergencies are happening and I didn't even like we got to fix him. And Loyal's just like going on with his sentence. He's like, yeah. why? Right, yeah, he's still trying to explain <laughs> how he the, found her. And he's in the Listen, background. That might be the not, most, that is the most book accurate thing because like that, that was happens the most all thing. the time. Yeah, oh. Lowell, Lowell will not stop his story <laughs> and he'll just keep going. It goes on like, it, he's like, I, I Cause he's like, I'm not going to rush story. for you. Yeah, it, right. it's, it's pretty yeah. good. He's like, so. we need to take my time. I'm going to take the time and I thought out what I'm going to say and I'm going to yeah. say it. And everyone else is like, okay, and they just do yeah. their things, and that happens all the time. And so, like when it was happening on TV, like I, I was cracking up, like in turn, like so I'm like, this is because when that wasn't very, right. that was he, yeah, um, it added some humor. So, and that's this, the other thing is, I think this series is like adding those bits of humor in. It's that, needed. That, I, I'm hoping so. In because, my mind, yeah. wasn't 
you didn't really get that in the book. No, a but whole like lot. the the tone of the first book is not that depressing. Like it's like it's still very lighthearted. It's, li- it's like lighthearted. We're going yeah. on an adventure. Because like the books get more and more serious, so I'm like the, the mm. show needs to line up a bit. Yeah, and throw in some like, like situational humor. Like, characters don't have to be like stand-up comedians, but like things like that where Lowell's just going in the back, going off in the background. Like explain. What's funny is he's explaining the scene we didn't get, which is how he found Nynaeve. Right. right. So right. we can go back to that in a second because this is what irked me. But I did like him. Even though, like, in the book, they're, like, huge. They get mistaken for Trollocs because they almost, like, they're that tall. And this one, because, and it, it's kind of got explained later, like, in interviews, um, that, like, they just didn't have the CGI. Like, they didn't have the budget to CGI a giant person throughout the whole thing. So they made him smaller, like, a uh, human size. Yeah, like, you know, like, I, tall I'm a, human. I'm but okay with that. Like, I was yeah. okay with it. And, like, I we, saw a still picture. We don't picture. need the Gandalf Hobbit uh, camera tricks all the time. Yeah. So. And I saw a still picture of him, and I'm like, oh, God, that looks... But like when they actually the actor did it, he like his voice excellent. Oh, he was great. Uh, with the looks and everything, the prosthetics looked realistic. Like they did yeah. not look cheap. Um, and I think that a lot of hair that looked and that, that was way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's not how I pictured. Yeah. But I thought they, for it not being book accurate in a lot of ways, I thought they did a really good job and really represented the character well. The part of the storyline I didn't like is that while the first one they were able to fit in like a lot of stuff about the white clothes and did a good job of like fitting this in in a short period of time by showing and not telling. Uh, this time, I went back twice because I thought I'd missed a scene. And it was two points. One, Matt, you were saying like Matt got went like from, like he, he was kind of like, had the darkness in it we saw earlier mm-hmm. to being like a little angrier. And then when we got there, you could see a little bit. And then he went to like, not able to get up. And we did not see that. There was so more. Like it just like, I well, feel like that jumped ahead. Well, we did get a time jump in this episode. Like very early but on, but even at got, the beginning of the episode, after the time jump, yeah, he didn't like come in where he was like, you know, he was fine. Like he was in the window, it looked dark. Uh, you know, it looked like he was struggling, but then he went from like somewhat struggling to like. And, I guess, and I guess that like, happens sometimes. Yeah, where, like, I, I it's saw like he, he was he was struggling walking, like he was looking pretty pale there. Um, like I, I don't know. I, I just felt like that went that was rushed. Uh, yeah, I, maybe you can disagree with me. Yeah, I, I, I might be wrong. Listen, of things that were rushed in this episode, I've, Matt's thing felt more natural than other things. Then, so the next part that was rushed was, <laughs> was yeah, they're like, oh, how well, did like, clearly, like, left, meet? and Nynaeve, and she, like, kind of escaped, and then there's just, like, this magical day, because Nynaeve went back when they went to go look for her, which couldn't have been that long. Their inn right. and the tower are not close. They make that very clear, and yet somehow, Lola and Nynaeve, not knowing each other, find each other, and then connect, and, and then he's discover. He's not even looking for Nynaeve, he was looking for Gwen. Yeah. He's so, like, oh, great, right. this is the girl you're talking about. Like, like it's not. Why? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We could have had a little less st- staring at uh, statues of old warders and given us the scene of them meeting. Yeah, no, 100%. Because I'm like, this is a, uh, there's thousands of people in the city. Multiples of thousands, not like yeah. a thousand, but like right. tens, hundreds, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people yeah, sure. in the city, uh, thousands of people in the White Tower. And he finds someone with a braid and he's like, I think I know you. You're wearing <laughs> yeah. a braid. Listen, she finally, like, I, I would like to give the show props for in the very beginning of this episode, then you go and, like, hog wild on playing with her braid, like, very stressfully finally doing it. Yes, like, no, uh, that, that I like. I, I was all, I, I got, like, warm feelings in my heart. I'm like, yes, the show gets it. Like, she's, we all have our nervous tics, and hers is playing with her braid, and she does it. And she does it, so. finally. We got the tug, bra- yeah, the braid like, tugging. Yeah, last episode, we got the, you know, um, straining her, her. The skirt smoothing. The skirt, yeah, we got the uh, braid tugging. Yeah, because that's all Robert Jordan knows about uh, how women handle stress, apparently. Yeah. So, um, okay, we're kind of, we've kind of skirted over what I feel like is actually the main point of the episode, <clears> which <throat> is dealing with grief and loss. Oh, and wait, before you get yeah. to that, though. Yeah. yeah. Before Big we move, sorry, I just want to go back to the random map for one last sure, thing. Sure, sure. I love, there, there are two points that I loved about it. I felt it was too rushed. Theirs was, but I did like it overall, but I felt like we just missed the scene. Um, there was a fourth uh, party that we have not been following that has shown up, and um, it was a little Easter egg, and it happened several times in this episode. Uh, Patton Fane. He is the... Um, I did not see him. Oh, he's in the background. Is he? So he's hidden. He's, like, in a doorway, but there's several times... Really nice. That he's okay. made it there, and I think he's been in other episodes that you kind of, like, spot him, but you hear the whistling. So remember, so Patton Fane is a peddler that Matt comes across and trades with right at the beginning. Yep. When um, oh, okay. the Trollocs attack, he just starts whistling. He just looks at him and casually walks away. 
very suspicious. We hear his whistling, and the whistling comes back, and they whistle in the episode, and you see him. So Interesting. we know, if you're paying attention, that he's there. And then I also like the fact that this is also like, who, who is the Dragon Reborn? When um, uh, the false dragon comes mm-hmm. through, and he looks up, and it's Matt and Rand, and he looks at them. He realizes what he's saying, and he starts laughing. Yeah. Because he's in chains as a male channeler when he can feel it like yeah. where women yeah. channelers well, like, and yeah. I can feel each other. Men can also yeah. sense his. So he gets up and starts has he not, Yeah. Has he not been gentled yet? I thought they did after the He attack. gentled him, but you can still feel it. Okay. I believe. Yeah. But he, because he sees that, and he laughs. Yeah. And even if you pick up on that, if you haven't read the books, you're yeah. like, well, who is he laughing at then? Right. Yeah. yeah, it could be Rain or Matt. So, yeah, right. um, so let's go to the main point of the episode, which is uh, loss of grief. Yeah, and like we got a lot of water, like uh, inner, like just like the the procedures and the life of a warder in Tarbalon. The re- and the relationship between yeah, the warder the, and and their ace and the and the yeah. Yeah, 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 tower. I did appreciate that. Like, yeah, I appreciated that, that, that they took the time to sort of. Let's let's spend some time yes, with that and talk it, about it. It is a weird, and the last two episodes have had a lot and of And you that. get more therapy, yeah. right? So, God, like, the, <laughs> listen, like... Uh, Men need therapy. Yeah, uh, RIP. Not while they're being tortured. That, that one but, mortar guy, yeah. But, and um, how, how... I love how Robert Jordan did this, and they did this in the book, too. Like, it's almost like on the nose. When we were talking about the, um, the white cloaks and how they're like, oh, these people have power and everything else. You don't know what it's like, and they abuse it. And then you have people literally in an ivory tower. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> literally in an ivory tower. But the white cloaks are also kind of uh, uh, like other oh, fanatics. Like, yeah, like they have their own things they believe. Like, it's very, it's, it, it feels real rich of them to be like throwing shade at another all white entity. So yeah, um, it, it is an off white entity since ivory's not uh, officially white. Uh, you can tell me it's a graphic well, it designer. Is, but... The city is white, but it's called the ivory tower. Yeah, right, right. But, right, yeah. but like, yeah, they're like, oh. You know, these people who have power and they, they feel like they're better than us because yeah. they can't lie and they have these things and they live in a literal ivory the, tower listen, the, that you're better than us. The, the, mis- the, mis- the misogyny uh, uh, that's present in the story towards the Aes Sedai feels more realistic now than it did three years ago when I first read it. And like, it's just going to keep feeling more real because that is how uh, our society would respond to a large group of powerful women uh, who have magical powers. Right, yeah. most people would not be a fan. Like, if they're so powerful, this is sort of, this is sort of my uh, my argument about uh, like Jewish conspiracies is that if we really were that powerful, if they said I were that powerful, they would stop those rumors from ever getting out. So we wouldn't let bad stories about us be present in society if we really were as powerful as the people say we are. Mm-hmm. Which is no, another indication. Seriously, I don't think that's actually. I I will disagree with you. All right. I don't think I don't think we disagree a lot. I'll disagree with you one right now because here's the thing: you can never stop. A story getting out, so that's not the reason. Uh, I feel like we would have a lot more power. Where's, like, where, where's that's the, the unrealistic yeah. part. Where's my, the four chan of this universe? My favorite um, conspiracy, when it, like when it comes to conspiracies, like let's just say um, uh, flat Earth. Yeah, and I'm really like, oh, it's flat Earth. We know it's because this. And they're like, oh, but what about like the people who say it's round? And they're like, oh no, they're lying for monetary gain. And we're like, oh, so like all world powers, scientists, astronauts, <laughs> and you would think of these like. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people working that are profiting of this, there's not going to be one person who goes, all right, we got to let the, we got to talk about it. You know, you have whistleblowers, not as many as we should, but you have whistleblowers for anything major going on. So I feel like you cannot just shut up something completely. Like, I think stuff coming out is more realistic. So when you have the conspiracies of like, you know, what it is. And so when it comes to the fantasy world, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, we're believing that they can't lie to us. And we have to believe that because they have the power and they're the ones who, who say yeah. that they're, they can't kill us unless they're being attacked and everything else. But we're just going to believe that. And it's like, okay, is it more believable? Yes, hi, hi. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Look, an in-person that's shout out. That's going to be a fun ad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've got fans. I know, listen. That's great. I'm always happy to meet a fan. Um, <laughs> So, but but you would think that like oh yeah. someone would come out and be like oh no they can really lie to us but everyone kind of takes it on faith because mm, you don't have true. those whistleblowers that's true um, so well, so 
some people take it on faith, That's except true. for the white cloaks who said that. But they, but he also made it seem like he, he believed it. He's like, oh, if you can't tell me, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you're probably not on our side. No, he yeah, was, he was like, apparent that he did believe it. He that, believed that it, was even though he hates the said, ah, he still believes. Yeah, like, everyone in this world believes they cannot lie. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't realize like they, they can't lie, but they can... Which is also the same thing, because you're like... He said, but he said, like, as much as they manipulate the truth. Yeah. yeah, he says something manipulate, but like everyone just takes it based on fact. Sure, I was just which is crazy because yeah. I'm just, like, yeah. honest Abe's used cars. I'll give you the best deal. Yeah. I'm honest Abe. I would be like, no, fuck you, you're not. Like, <laughs> clearly, Listen, I was, why are you yeah. saying that? With the eyes that I going, we never lie. You can believe us. We never lie. You'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I'll believe everything you say now because you told me you can't lie. I was distracted by his massive guns, so uh, you know, because he, he took his shirt off. Anyway, yeah. um, what? The, the the Inquisitor guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very crazy. right. Yeah, like he was, he, he was, a, he was inviting Aguin to the gun show. I believe you need so. to have bare arms when you're carving up. Someone's that's right. Back. That's right. That's right. Also, like, you why, gotta have he, some freedom why does he have to eat the most disgusting looking uh, food that you can clearly see where it is? <laughs> anyway, like, I, I think got, it's the fact that he can just like sit there and casually enjoy it because he's not yeah. worked up. He's not angry. Yeah. He's not. I mean, he's fanatical, but he's not like yeah. oh, passionate. Yeah. Like I hate you so much. He goes, no, you're wrong, and I'm gonna prove yeah. it. The, I mean, the, and it's going to come to light, and that's fine. And I'm going to eat. I'm going to be casual about it, because if I were worked up, then that would not be right. The thing. So yeah. we've talked about this. Let's go back to okay. the Ice Where and I, the White Tower. Yes, we've got to get through this episode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, the the three uh, Nynaeve, uh Moraine and Lan are in the White Tower dealing with the loss of the Ace Sedai from the battle in the previous episode, and that warder is going through some stuff. He's feeling some feelings. Um, I think it's another example of like how close the uh, bond is between yeah. Asai and Warner. And this was a really good way to show that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as, as someone who like, it's, it really feels like yeah, they, like, they are like, uh, combined, like, they're, their essence of beings are tied together so closely that when you lose one, you feel like like half of yourself has also died. That, that's yeah. always the impression I've got. Yeah. And, and you saw you, that a lot in even just in the way that uh, uh, Land yeah. reacted. Yeah. And and all of it, you know, like he doesn't say much, um, but even in the scenes where he doesn't say anything, you know what he's feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, like he, you like he, he touches Moraine. Like he's, he's at so one point delicate, he looks yeah. at Moraine like yeah. almost as if to say like. Don't like you can't ever die. Yeah, because yeah. then this is going to happen to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, like in, in their like connection, and also it shows. And like, you got that in, the, in in the hot tub scene. Yeah, early on, where like again, if it was Game of Thrones, they would have like gotten it on yeah. in the hot tub. Well, and I think but it shows. It, it. But this just shows, shows like a very very close intimate. Yeah. That's not friendship. sexual. That's yeah. not sexual. But like they're so but close it, together, it's yeah. like oh. So you make, like we're course, we're the same. Of course, we're just going to take a bath the together. Yeah. But I like this it, tub. But that's. But here's the thing. I like that it shows the difference because it even talks later on um, about Alana with the with her two warders, and they are clearly a throuple. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. One, I love, love it. I'm here for the, the it. Book, the books do talk about that. I mean, like and, they and, and there's okay. some who it becomes okay. sexual because you know them. You're so connected. Yeah. But gotcha. I like that it shows the difference. Whereas, like on one end, you have it where they are like so close. They are like connected. They respect each other, but it's not sexual. On the other end, when you have that close connection with people. Sometimes it can be sexual. And I don't want to say that the green are the horny Aja, but I think anyone who's either watching this or read the books, the green they is are. the horny Aja. The yeah. green is the horny Aja. Uh, uh, they like a demand and they and like so more than one. I think that the greens tend to act more on that to be make it sexual. Yeah. But, I, but in, and, and I think that's it shuts a weird... So we talked about power early, the power play between Waters and Aes Sedai, and then also making that sexual... Is weird because yeah. there is a power dynamic. Like even if you're a consenting adult, it's like, hey, I'm sleeping with my boss. Yeah, it's like, consensual you, and it, it works out you, really well. You, but you also have a power you're given, dynamic. You're given strength and endurance. Like there's, it, it amazes me that they're all not sleeping with their warders because literally they give the, the warders the power to perform better in bed. Like they don't need perform sleep. Perform better. They're stronger. And it just happens. To also, could also yeah. be in bed. I feel like that's like when you. Um, Get a fortune cookie and you can read it in yeah, bed afterwards. Yeah, literally, literally, it's the in bed of fortune cookies all the yeah. time with them. Because they're like, you have greater yeah. stamina in bed. Yeah, and you I, could, you yeah. know. And what what amazes you me? You can of, go for hours in bed in bed. <laughs> I will say the show like talked about the the the, the thruple aspect of it in a very like I would say 
casual, non-homophobic way that I found very refreshing same. for uh, a show. To yeah, end. same. Well, even the series, just go back to the book, uh, treated, it wasn't like, there was a lot of like outward um, homosexual relationships, but it was also like hinted at that it was like, oh yeah, at different points, like this yeah. happens. And there was even some characters who had that. And it was not shunned. Right. Like, oh, this happens. Yeah. There, there was, there was and a lot of I'm Hello thinking Biden about, talk which in, is uh, weird, the barmaid who assumed yeah, that yeah. Uh, yeah. Matt and Rand were together. Yeah. yeah. So in the show, but they're she, doing it, but it's, but it's She never made a deal about it. Yeah. 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 They she, didn't even make a deal yeah. about yeah. it. He was just like, I could do better. We thought that was great. Which, <laughs> but yeah. it's one funny line so far. And, so. And that relationship didn't happen, but like, there's parts in the book where you have homosexual, even if it's short term, Things mentioned in the books, which is 2021, that's not uncommon. In the 90s, I'm in the sure late 80s, early been. 90s, yeah. especially with the eight, um, pandemic epidemic and everything else going on, like hinting at that there could be homosexual characters, either men or women, and that that happens. And a fantasy book series was actually a much bigger deal. Yeah, and it's not I the same ones that. They're, they're covering yeah. right now. They're not like taking those storylines and putting them in the show, but like the fact that that existed. Um, back then, back I could, then, yeah. I could see that it would be a, a big much deal. bigger deal. Yeah, um, and as yeah, someone who read it sure. in the '90s and noticed that, like, no, that was that was huge. You did not see that a lot. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna quickly wrap up the rest of the episode so we can talk about other things. So, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so the the warder brings back the ring. Um, I like the touch of the horse just having one of her boots as a signifier that she did not make it back. Uh, he puts the ring into what looked like a mini M Mount of Doom. Uh, and the ring dissolved. And Weirdly, that was the only CGI I did not like. It dissolved very quickly. Well, and it like dispersed like up in the air and everything. It didn't like melt down. I'm, it I'm, just like magically dispersed. I'm like, that's not how a ring would melt. The camera's not gonna be picking this up, but I literally wrote down my precious at that particular moment. <laughs> my, so, my precious. Uh, so yeah, okay. So it, it, It's true because the water was the one who did it and he lost his precious. Yeah, and like, here's the thing. I feel yeah. like Moraine, uh, Moraine, um, knew he was going to commit suicide because she literally said he will bring her ring back. Like, she he, she knew how long he was going to last. He had a duty. And, and a duty. warders are very big on duty. But here's the thing. Very few warders survive their Aes Sedai's. If they don't die with them in battle, yeah, then they waste away, they kill themselves. It's made it very apparent in the book. Um, and in the book, like, sisters, like, outright, and even, like, they even talked about it during the episode. Warders and sisters, they know this. Everyone knows this, and they talk about it because you lose someone that's like literally a part of you. Yeah, um, that that can be overwhelming, and one of those ways is to be kind of like bonded by another sister. But a lot of people like when you lose someone close to you, um, you don't want to be like, oh, if I could like wipe that away and just not yeah. feel it, you would not say that. You want to feel that. It's not like when, like, say you have a family member who whose pet dies. And you're like, we need to get you a, a, a baby version of that same animal. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, uh, not it, not surprising to anyone who's ever watched anything. Uh, the water commits suicide at the end. Um, it's very sad. So we get to see an Ace Sedai funeral, and then we get to see a water funeral where Lan like oh. emotionally lets loose yeah. in a very like. <clears throat> I, I, I will give the show this. They are very good at showing how Lan and Moraine are connected. Yeah. Where Lan is in so much pain and Moraine just mm -hmm. starts crying. Like instantaneously. Mm -hmm. And Lan won't ever cry. Yeah. She's he a very feels it. Like the fact that he could like even scream and show that, but whatever he's feeling, Moraine feels. Yeah. Like here's the thing, even if she did not know that warder or care about him, yeah. just feeling that from Lan. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, Lan is like the most solid show no emotion character throughout the entire series. I read online some complaints of like, oh, he showed too much emotion. I'm like, that's the one time he would. I feel like he was channeling that pain from all the warders. Yeah. Right? Like, because like, it felt like they he were calling the him out. Yeah, he was the representative. So like, he was channeling right. everyone in that room's emotions, which I gotta say, like, that, that thing got to me. Like, I didn't think it would, because I was gonna be kind of oh, silly, but no, it, it got to me. Can I tell you, um, uh, the throughout the series, and not this early on in the series, but in the series and the books later on, um, Lance, one of my favorite characters, he didn't when I was like, in my teens and reading this for the first time in the 90s. Um, the first books, he wasn't, because he's just a solid character. You're like, oh, he doesn't even have a personality. Yeah. You just don't, it's hard to determine like just what that is, because he is. He was just so making fun of Rand all the time. And just like, no, he was helpful, and he was like this like rock you could rely on. 
but it, like there was a person. But he has so much personality, and you get later on where you get more emotion from him. Like some of the more emotional books, I have a bookmark, um, both in person in, in the book and on my audio book. We can bookmark stuff my Audible account, um, where I will go back and even now not read an entire book, but go back to certain scenes. And one of those is a land scene, and it's when he's so emotional he breaks. I did not expect it was early in the season, but it did. Like. Those are the points where, like, the book has made me cry. The book series has made me cry. And uh, two of those moments were land scenes. Mm. Well, uh, well, would it surprise you? Because I'm a, as someone who just reread book one, like, we get a lot of land backstory t- in the, like, the back, the back quarter of the first book. Oh, yeah, the end of the first yeah. book. Where yeah, again, we like, do. The, again, and maybe the, sh- maybe the show is moving as quickly as it is. So that, because the book kind of moves quickly all of a sudden, too. Like, it spends half oh, the book, the, like, slowly The very going. last in the book, and, like, everything's rushed. Like, I'm like, what is going huh, on? Huh, wow, wow, wow. They're moving, they're, they're moving like, uh, season eight of Game of Thrones fast yeah. at the end of book one. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, it goes, like, uh, you know, in, in the books, um, they're not going to Tarvalon. They're going to Camelin, but uh, it takes them forever to get to Camelin. As soon as they get to Camelin, yeah. they're like, and, and boom. Then, and they're like, boom, the blight. So, uh, which we'll learn about later. Um, all right, so let's, you know, we're, how, we're, our, we're 46 minutes into this. So let's talk about what... Any show like this that's adapting a massive book series is gonna have to tweak things. And some things we're gonna like and some things we're not gonna like. So let's all let's all talk about one one book change that we did like and one book change we did not like. So a knit and a pick. So um, so let, let's do our let's do our picks first, our likes, and I, I will go first. And I will say that it was very important to me for Rand and Lowell to meet in a library in an inn. And I'm fine with it being moved to Tarvalon versus Camelin. It actually makes some sense in a way. It makes way more sense, actually. In some ways. Um, And, you know, like, having all the characters reunite in Tarvalon versus Camelin, I think, again, like, in in, in a book, right? In a book, you want to, like, take your time and uh, show the world. In a visual medium, they can show the world in so many ways. They can skip over Camelin if they're going to introduce those characters later on. And I'm... I am... 100% 100% on board with the let's involve Tarvalon earlier in the story. So, that's mine. Oh, I loved it. Actually, I'm kind of the same way. I like the Aes Sedai. In the beginning, you own, like in the in the book, you pretty much, the entire first book, you only, you see, you see a few others, but pretty much 99% of the time you spend with any Aes Sedai is Moraine, and then the only water you really see is land. And you think those are the, like, oh, these are the standards of what they're going to be. And they're not. But you don't realize that in book one. I like the fact that I introduced so many people, you realize that these are going to be major players, but they're very, very different. All the eyes that I are different. Uh, they have different personality, different goals, um, different like motivations. And I think that they introduced that early was awesome. And I actually really appreciate that. Um, and I think that, honestly, just for like getting the story out, they've done a great job. So moving it, skipping a lot of that stuff in the middle... Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, uh, Matt and Rand don't need to stop at every inn along the way. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so you don't need to I, run to, like, six dark friends yeah. when one yeah, was in. I, I don't have any specifics because, of course, I, you know, long time ago. Yeah. Don't remember much of it. But what, what, is, what has been your favorite so but, far about this episode? Oh, favorite thing so far about the episode? Yeah. Uh, a couple things, actually. Number one, this sort of. Uh, what I feel is kind of this deep discussion about power dynamic, especially throwing... So it, it, so far, episodes one through four, you're sort of left with the impression that women have most of the power in this world. But then you get this scene in, in episode five where uh, the red Aes Sedai leader, I can't remember her name... Uh, Leandrin. Uh, explains, like, like, men have... Oh, have, have yeah. the, the power in this world. And I was like, now, wait a minute. Okay, that's that's a little bit of a twist. So uh, it was interesting to see that um, and, and kind of Men's noodle on that a little bit. So And like and like now I'm wondering, okay, so what's going to happen next? And, and, and so it, that, it sort of kind of keep it, it helps to kind of keep you guessing. Yeah. Again, as, as a new viewer, as someone who's coming into this some relatively fresh eyes. Yeah. It does. And, um, and I think because I think you know, and something like, oh, it's a world where women have power. They don't naturally have power. I think the men still naturally have power mm-hmm. on the basis of being men. And the women only have power because they take it. 
and they don't do it by force because they're women. They do it by magical force because yeah. like, that's what they have. And the first book, the first book, I mean, the first book, which includes, you know, uh, Camelin and uh, Morg Morgase, the, the queen. Like, the first book is yeah, all Morgase. about female power and you don't like you meet right. you meet like one king sort of uh, yeah. near the end but you meet a lot of kings later on and gotcha I think the show's doing a very good job of showing that like yeah this world has like in the book uh, the White Cloaks are trying to take Perrin and Egwene to like the headquarters of uh, their order because that's where their power comes from right if you think about it Who's running any of this? Like the White Cloaks are allowed to just torture somebody for whatever reason? Like who's who's in charge? Right. And we don't we don't it's a feudal it's a feudal world where we haven't met a single leader yet. We haven't met the, the Amelin State, we haven't met a king, we haven't met a queen. So who's running things? And I think leaving it open like that is actually a very interesting like a dynamic discussion of because in the middle, in, in the chaos, who who who's controlling the chaos? Uh mm. just to quote, you know, uh some of my favorite artists, uh, Beyonce, who runs the world. Yeah, there you go. Or Miller's Crossing. That's right. <laughs> Running things. Running things, Running yeah. things. Running things. Okay, so now... But, uh, the other, so the other thing I liked was this sort of... Uh, just just simply showing of men's emotions. Yeah. It's something you don't see That's on screen true. a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I really appreciate it, especially in this episode... Uh, like the, the, how the, much yeah. time was spent on that? The most masculine, um, quiet man that we know, Lamb, right? Just breaks. Bra breaks and shows his sadness sort of throughout the episode. Right. So there needs right. to be another test. So we have the Bechdel test, which uh, Will of Time has passed by flying colors. Yeah. Um, but there's also... Thanks. Uh, <laughs> there's also a test that we should have where it's like, hey... Um, Men have a conversation, like a man has a conversation with another man, where there's no women involved. That's about emotions, and not about what's happening. Yeah, okay, right, right. There should be yeah. like, let's yeah, name I this don't know what we right call now. that. Oh, yeah. oh, what, what do we, we call, call that test? test? What do we call? I would, like it. Uh, we can come back to it. Everybody think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send I, I in your coin, suggestions. I want to coin this. I want to coin this on this podcast. It, it, but it's yeah, all that, all I, I agree. The, the Wheel like, of Pod test. How about that? Let's throw it down. The the Mechdel test. But yeah, no, I did. I did appreciate that. That was that much screen time spent on that yeah yeah it's uh, you know it's, 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 it's just something it's you don't see it's refreshing that we've see. done like it's weird to say like it was refreshing to get like a very uh, rough scene of them cleaning Egwene egg but like that wasn't sexualized like that was not nice but it was it, it was, was good. weird it was good it was weird but it was like it's it was supposed have... to make you feel creepy yeah but yeah. it wasn't supposed to make you feel sexual yeah right I don't want to like say ooh and then be aroused at the same time it's weird shows me to stop doing that um but showing, allowing the warders to show their emotion, and it's just nice. It was nice to have that because it was sad though. They built up these two characters that you really liked. So we're not Game of Thrones level yet, but they are killing very likable characters. That's yeah. true. Like over here, what are the names? Who's next? We'll find out. Like, can you remember? Can you remember the Ace Eyes name and oh, who was it? Yeah, it's clearly. Um, we can edit in where like I say this okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. His name was Stefan. The word name was Stefan. I know that from the was credits. It? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I paused remember. it, and Amazon Prime was like, this actor played Stefan. I'm like, thanks. Thanks, Amazon Prime. Um, I'm going to trick Andy and ask him later. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you were like, I care about these characters. I'm like, so what are their names? Anyway, I'm terrible with names. So, like, I, I, I am also, yeah, I'm terrible with I mean, names. It's, so. like, it's like that uh, SNL sketch where they're like, have celebrities go on and like oh, name yeah. like people around them. Yeah. yeah. What oh, is, this is a person who's worked for me for 12 years. What's their name? Yeah. Uh, that's a, uh -uh. Yeah. What is burn notice? All right. Um, okay. Let, let's talk about the changes we did not like. Uh, and normally I have very many. I have lots. Uh, this one was less because this is almost a completely new scene, a completely new part of the story where they moved some things from Camelon to Tar uh, Tarvalon. Love, all, love ON names uh, and cities. And I'm okay with Camelon being skipped for now. Yeah, that's fine. Because it's a whole different set. Like, we're going to come to it later. This, I want, we're going to see a lot I just of want, there's, a, there's one scene in Camelon I would like to see, and that is Rand, uh, how Rand meets some people in the town. That part's funny. I want to see it. That's not going to happen. We've yeah. already skipped that. We've already missed it. Well, they have to introduce her somehow. Like uh, him falling and meeting. No, 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 I know. All I right. know what you're talking about. Okay. Anyway, listen, well, I'll, I, I will nitpick when we get to that scene then. Um, <laughs> I will say, I guess, like, the show is still teasing us on any of these characters being uh, the Dragon Reborn, 
And, oh, uh, I'll tell you what I didn't like. This show has twice now committed, like, just, like, very basic fantasy trope problems. And they did it again this episode, where another character points out to Rand that he doesn't look like he's from the Two Rivers. And I'm like, for people who have not read the books, it's got to be pretty obvious to them he's not from there. And, like, so either tell us that or move on. Like, no, it's, they're teasing. They're still teasing. Like, uh, Lil, in the books, is, like, the first person to tell him that. Rand's heard this three times already, mm -hmm. that he doesn't look like uh, someone from the Two Rivers. And he doesn't. Because apparently there are no gingers in the Two Rivers. So they are ginger-free. So, ginger but, free since uh, yeah, ginger free since uh, since the breaking of the world. Um, but uh, apparently, all the ailmen are gingers. So I'm looking forward to that. So. Um, it's hard to pick because it is a lot of different things that are in the books. But I just felt that um, the Rand Matt story just there was another scene in there that got cut um, with like finding Nynaeve and like him getting sicker and you know and. While the uh, actress plays Nynaeve has done an amazing job, and she was upset, like, you know, you just feel that, and like, man, I just, I just want to see more of it. I was not even an epic. Like, I just want, I just want to see more. Like, I literally, I went back twice, going, what, what did I miss? Like, did I fall asleep for a second? Did I blink? And um, I just felt like it, it was a weird, it was a weird show. Because sometimes you can be like a month later, and they're all in the city. Like, right. Yeah. That's and, the jumping I can get behind. And here's the thing. The show could be as long as it wants to be. They could have included that scene. They could have made it one, ten episodes. Yeah. They, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Listen. They we, could have shortened it, like, some of the weird... I want we love, I, I want all of our viewers to understand. I'm looking at the camera here. So the Amazon sees it. Amazon... We know you're watching everything. Make them ten episodes. Like, you're already spending so much money. How... Is $20 million that much, like, that much more to you? Like, seriously. Anyway. That, that is something that I think that this series has gotten a lot of criticism for, is... The low budget, and I, I, I'm looking at it as, look at what they've done. Oh no, it looks, with a relatively yeah. small amount of money. I mean, yeah. like, look I at mean, what ten you, million sounds like a lot, but like when you get like accomplished. actors traveling to another side, yeah. like all this stuff right. that's not a huge. They have so many wardrobe people. Like one of the criticisms that, that their clothes don't look lived in, they're getting better at it. Like I almost feel like they filmed episodes one and two at one point, and then went back and filmed the rest of it. Because it's gotten way better. Yeah. On everything. Yeah. I mean, again, like, I, I, I still say, like, episode one did not look $10 million good. It looked pretty bad. I <laughs> yeah. Thought, but This one I felt like was $10 million. Uh, This one did. Well, because, like, except like, for the ring melting. That was my only that, that was That was very fast. Again, like, I don't know. Like, it didn't, like, bubble or anything. It just, like, dissipated. It just, yeah, it just dissolved. I'm like, how hot is that thing? Like, like there was no warning sign there. Like, do not do not touch. Hot. Anyway, uh, Carlos, did you, I mean. I, you, and also, do you, like, form? Is that where they form other rings from? Like, listen, that possibly. was not explained because yeah. it's not in the books either. Is this, like, um, uh, the Star Wars uh, where they, like, do the armor for the. Uh, oh, for, like, the, 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 the Mandalorian. For the Mandalorian, Mandalorian armor. armor yeah, where, like, you have to take in, because it's specially made and it's, like, one thing. Is that like I, I, felt, like, I got very much yeah. Mandalorian vibes from it? I was like, doesn't look anything like the Ice Planet where they get um, their Kyber crystals. But anyway, <laughs> nerd stuff. All right, uh, nerd Carlos, stuff. I know it's been a, a while since you read the books, but was there something about this episode that you sort of recollected from a book scene, and you're like, why did they do it this way? N no, oh, re no right. recollections. All right. <laughs> how about but, in, how about in the show so far? But uh, just a, a show in general. Again, I feel like. Uh, it, 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 the show gets criticized for, for moving too fast uh, compared to what the book, you know, sort of pacing is. And I, I think it's a. I think people get lost in the sort of story versus plot yeah. discussion, right? Like, to me, they're hitting all the story points. They're they're playing with the plot, and they're keeping it interesting. That you know that 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 like you said they they're not they're not going to the same city. People aren't meeting in the same ways. Yeah. I remember, like, um, wasn't one of the parties, like, uh, traveling by boat and not... There, yes. there, there was a uh, whole boat We thing. missed the whole boat yeah, thing. Yeah, the boat thing was completely yeah, There, there was a boat thing. They literally missed the boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but you're still getting the story. Yeah. Right? You're still getting these backstories. And you're still telling a really good story. You're yeah. still getting uh, all the dynamics, all the power dynamics. Yeah. You're still getting... Uh, just, you're, you're still learning all about this world. You're just learning in a different way than, you know, reading, reading. Yeah. 
You yeah. know? I just want to know, why are Ram's I mean, weapons but, so big? Like, his bow and arrow is ginormous. Huge. His sword, when he sits, it's like up to here. <laughs> oh, no, I get it, but yikes. Anyway. Because uh, it's a point. Two Rivers bow, yeah. which I hope they explain later, because yeah. the Two Rivers bow is like a normal bow. Because we're not going to explain it now, we're going to explain later, because it's going to come up. Gotcha. Um, all right, well, we're, we're at an hour, so we we're should, at an hour. We we wrap, wrap up. this up. So, all right. we have three episodes of the show left. Yes. yes. I know where they have to go to get to the end of book one. I still don't see how they're going to do it, but the show surprised me already. But I got to say... I was very worried after I, watching no. episode one and two about the this show. I, I, I I'm comforted now. It's it, it's it's better. Oh yeah, I'm sold. I'm in. I actually where they're at now. I think they can get there in three episodes now because I think I know where they're going. The fact that they've been able to cover like because they've already covered like three quarters of the book. Yeah, I guess yeah, they've just cut out a lot. Of so it, but yeah, yeah they, they cut out the stuff that was not needed in my opinion. So I'm looking forward to it. I also want to thank. Our guest host today um, for bringing a really great perspective oh, of someone who's not as familiar yeah. with the books, but also you know has a great knowledge on fantasy, pop culture, yeah. and uh, what what we want to see. And thank you for uh, taking a joke you made and allowing me to ask you to put it into our logo, <laughs> yes. which is the microphone. That the Go check. Is, yeah, which Go check out the, the, the logo. The talking I, to a microphone, and he was joking about it, but I was like, no, we must have it. That was and literally an idea that I had at, like, what, 11-something at night? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty late. I was like, I've never been so happy with an idea. <laughs> Uh, anyway, if I, you know, because you have to do the Ouroboros. That's you know, right. You have to do the snake eating its own tail. Um, but I was, so I was trying to, in Illustrator, work on the end of the tail, and I'm like, what if I just put a microphone there? Yes. And I was like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is a late night stupid idea. I love it. But you actually ran with it. I love so. it so much. And also, I love how the snake also is kind of disdainfully looking at the microphone. <laughs> yeah. like he's not even happy to be talking about it. Was microphone. Microphone. it was perfect. It was perfect. Anyway, <laughs> Carlos, thank you. Andy, thank you. Uh, to the Inner Circle Vodka Bar. To all the people not listening, thank you. And, to the tavern. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll see you next time on The Wheel of Pod. Music play. <laughs> Thank you.